As we work with these advanced integration techniques, we're going to take a look at trigonometric substitution to answer the question, how do we take the integral of the square root of a sum or difference of squares. In other words, how do we take integrals that have the square root of a perfect square minus x squared or the square root of x squared plus a perfect square or the square root of x squared minus a perfect square. How do we take integrals involving those expressions? Those are very difficult to take generally with our current strategies. But if we use trig substitution and Pythagorean identities, These integrals become much simpler to evaluate, especially with the strategies we saw with the trig equations in our previous lesson. So first, just to review the main Pythagorean identity that we know is that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. To get the other Pythagorean identities, we either divide by sine squared or cosine squared. If we divide by cosine squared, we end up with tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. If you divide by sine squared, you get the other one. But we're not going to use the other one today. These properties will help us simplify stuff down to integrals that are much easier to work with. So let's take a look at the three cases with the square roots of sums and differences. Let's start with the case where we're taking the square root of a perfect square, maybe 25, 9, 49 minus our variable squared. If we have a case where we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, what we will do is we will let x equal a times sine of theta. Now, when we do that, what that means, if I divide both sides by a, that means x over a is equal to the sine of theta. So we can build a triangle to represent our theta angle, a right triangle. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if sine is x over a, the hypotenuse is x. Sorry, the opposite is x. The hypotenuse is a. And the Pythagorean theorem tells us the other side is our a squared minus x squared. But what's nice is from this, if we let x equal a sine theta, then dx is equal to a cosine theta. Let's take a look at an example. Let me make that number one in black. Let's take a look at an example where we use this substitution and see how nice it simplifies our integral. Let's say we've got the integral of x cubed divided by the square root of 25 minus x squared dx. Notice we've got that square root bit with the difference of squares, 25 minus x squared. When we recognize that we have a perfect square minus x squared, we will always say, let's let x equal a, which is the square root of the 25, 5 sine theta. We know that means x over 5 equals sine theta, which means we can build a triangle to represent our angle, theta. x over 5 is the sine. And the adjacent side then is 25 minus x squared. We'll come back to that triangle in just a minute. dx is the derivative of 5 sine, which is 5 cosine theta d theta. There should be a d theta up above, too. That's an error up there. d theta is important, so we know what variable we're working with. 
So when we make our substitution, we end up with the integral of x cubed. x is 5 sine theta. So when we cube 5, we get 125 sine cubed of theta over the square root of 25 minus x squared. Square the 5, we get 25 sine squared of theta dx. The dx also gets replaced by multiplying by 5 cosine theta d theta. What's really nice is that square root is going to simplify very beautifully. If we factor out a 25, you get 1 minus sine squared theta. And 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. And what's nice is this is all under a square root. And the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of cosine squared is cosine theta. So all of this is going to simplify to the integral of 125 sine cubed theta over 5 cosine theta times 5 cosine theta d theta. And then the magic happens. The fives divide out. The cosines divide out. Really, all that we are left with to actually take the integral of is, I'm going to pull that 125 out, 125 times the integral of sine cubed theta d theta. Much easier integral to take than the original integral. We did this yesterday. We know with an odd sign, we're going to pull out sine squared. So we have 125 times the integral of sine squared theta times sine of theta d theta. Because that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared theta times sine theta d theta so that u can be the cosine of theta. du is sine theta d theta. And so we end up with the 125 times the integral of 1 minus u squared du, which is 125 times u minus 1 third u cubed. u is cosine, so we have 125 times the cosine of theta minus 1 third cosine cubed of theta. Now that we finally got our answer, not forgetting our plus c, we can go back to x's finally. And that's where our triangle comes in handy. So now if I scroll, we're going to be scrolling back and forth. We've got 125 times the cosine of theta. Going to my triangle, cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So it's the square root divided by 5. The square root of 125, oops, sorry, the square root of 25 minus x squared divided by the hypotenuse of 5 minus 1 third times the cosine cubed, which is the square root of 25 minus x squared all over 5 cubed plus a constant. Extra parentheses that I missed there. So we're going to clean this up a bit. Technically, that's correct, but it's really hard to see what's going on. Let's cube top and bottom. So we have 125 times the square root of 25 minus x squared over 5 minus 1 third times, let's write this as a fractional exponent, 25 minus x squared to the 3 halves power over 5 cubed is 125 plus a constant. And if we distribute the 125 through onto both parts, it's going to reduce quite nicely. We end up with 25 times the square root of 25 minus x squared minus 1 third times uh, 25 
minus x squared to the 3 halves power plus a constant. And let's actually settle there. That looks pretty clean to me for our final antiderivative. So it took a little bit of paper to get there, but the key that made everything possible was we let x equal a sine theta, and then everything simplified out quite nicely, giving us an integral that was much easier to solve. Notice the only thing we took an integral of was a simple polynomial, 1 minus u squared. And that was possible because of that trig substitution. So. That is our strategy when we have a perfect square minus the x squared, the difference of squares. What is our strategy, though, if we're adding a squared plus x squared? C. Square root of a squared plus x squared. If we've got a squared plus x squared, we're going to do a very similar thing. This time, we're going to let a x equal a tangent of theta, which means x over a equals the tangent of theta. So if we build our triangle, x over a is opposite over adjacent. So the hypotenuse is the square root of a squared plus x squared. But what's nice about letting x equal a tangent of theta then we know that dx is going to be a times its derivative secant squared of theta, d theta. This will allow us to use the other Pythagorean identity to simplify and clean up the problem quite nicely. Let's take a look at the integral of x cubed times the square root of 4 plus x squared dx. Notice we see the sum of squares, 4 plus x squared, inside that square root. That is our key that we're going to let x equal the square root of 4, which is 2, and tangent theta because we're adding, which means x over 2 is equal to the tangent of theta. And so we can draw our little triangle from theta. x over 2 is the opposite and the adjacent. Square root of 4 plus x squared is the hypotenuse. Again, we'll come back to that picture when we get to our final substitution step. And now let's see how this cleans up our problem. dx then is 2 secant squared theta d theta. And so we have the integral of x cubed. 2 cubed is 8, tangent cubed of theta times the square root of 4 plus x squared. 2 squared is 4, tangent squared of theta, times dx. That dx becomes the entire thing, times 2 secant squared theta d theta. Again, that square root is going to simplify quite nicely. Following much the same process, if you factor out the 4, the square root of 4 is 2. Then we'll have 1 plus tangent squared, which you should know is secant of theta. So that square root is going to simplify to 2 secant theta, giving us the integral of, let's multiply these numbers, 8 times 2 times 2 is 32. And let's pull that 32 out front. 32 times the integral of tangent cubed theta times secant cubed theta d theta, combining those secants together. When we look at this expression that has a tangent cubed and a secant cubed in it, we know with an odd power of tangent, we can pull one tangent and one secant out. And then we'll end up with something we can do a secant substitution on. Keep the 32 out front. Careful not to lose the 32. And we're left with tangent squared theta and a secant squared theta times a secant theta tangent theta that we pulled out, d theta. Keeping the 32 out front, tangent squared. We know that tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. 
times secant squared theta times the secant theta tangent theta d theta, which is equal to keeping the 32 out front and distributing the secant squared through secant to the fourth theta minus secant squared theta times, I'm going to have to write small here, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. All that stuff at the end, though, we know is going to become our du as we make our substitution. u equals secant of theta. du then is secant theta tangent theta d theta. And so we end up with 32 times the integral of u to the fourth minus u squared du. And finally, after all the trig and all the algebra, we're ready to actually do calculus on a very easy, simple problem. 32 out front times 1 fifth u to the fifth minus 1 third u cubed plus a constant. Now, before we start substituting back, I'm going to do a little cleanup. I'm going to factor out a u cubed. And I'm also going to factor out a 15, 1 15th. Gets rid of the fraction and combines as many of the u's together as possible. So we have 32 over 15 u cubed. And we factor a 15 out of 1 fifth. We're left with 3 u squared after 3 of them came out minus 1 third. Factor out a 15th. We're going to have 5. And all the u's came out plus a constant. And now we'll start substituting back until we end up with our x's. So we have 32 over 15 times u, which is secant cubed of theta, times 3u, which is secant squared of theta, minus 5 plus a constant. But now we can go back to our triangle. Secant is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. It's the reciprocal of the cosine. So the secant is just the square root of 4 plus x squared divided by 2. And so when we plug that in, we get 32 over 15 times secant, which is the square root of 4 plus x squared divided by 2 cubed times 3 times the secant, which is the square root of 4 plus x squared divided by 2 squared minus 5 plus a constant. Cleaning up then, let's do those exponents, 32 over 15 times, let's write the 4 plus x squared with a fractional exponent 3 halves over 2 cubed is 8 times 3 times the square root squared just gives us 4 plus x squared over 2 squared is 4 minus 5 plus a constant. And a little bit of cleanup, 32 over 8 reduces down to 4. And then I'm going to distribute that 4 onto both parts. So we're left with 1 15th times 4 plus x squared to the 3 halves times, and the 4's divide out, and we're just left with the 3. And then I'm going to also distribute the 3 through. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 3x squared minus, distribute the 4 through, 4 times 5 is 20, plus a constant. And let's just combine our final like terms together, the 12 plus the 20, to get our final answer of 1 15th times 4 plus x squared to the 3 halves times, we've got a 3x squared minus 8 plus a constant. And we have our antiderivative.
Again, it followed much the same strategy as before. We'll do a substitution where x is equal to a times the tangent of theta. Simplify the trig. And then it should simplify to something we can take, again, a very easy integral. The only actual integral we took was u to the fourth minus u squared. They should simplify to something we know how to integrate. Now, the one we just looked at here, the sum of x squared, a squared plus x squared, addition works both ways. So this would also work for x squared plus a squared. However, the first example we did, subtraction, the order does matter, and it does make a difference. So with the first example, it has to be the perfect square minus x squared. If the order is switched, and we have the square root of x squared minus the perfect square, we can still use a trig substitution. But this time, we're going to let x equal a secant of theta and follow pretty much the same pattern. x over a then is equal to the secant of theta. So we can draw a triangle to represent our theta angle. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So x is the hypotenuse. a is the adjacent. Square root of x squared minus a squared is the other side then. And we also can calculate our dx is a times secant theta tangent theta. Let's take a look at an example of what this looks like. Let's do the integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus 4. Again, we see that x squared minus 4 under the square root. That is our key that we are going to let x equal. The square root of 4 is 2. Secant of theta. Well, that tells us that x over 2 is equal to the secant of theta. So we can draw a triangle where x is the hypotenuse, 2 is the adjacent, and the other side is x squared minus 4. dx, we also know, is 2 times secant theta tangent theta d theta. Never forget the d theta, which I did on number 1 there. Now that we've got our setup done, we're ready to actually make our substitution. The integral of dx, dx becomes 2 secant theta tangent theta d theta over the square root of x squared. Oops, but x is 2 squared is 4, secant squared theta minus 4. We should recognize that that's going to simplify with a 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Secant squared minus 1 is tangent of theta, which becomes very nice because the 2's divide out. The tangent divides out. And this equation simplifies to the integral of the secant of theta d theta. And we already know the integral of secant of theta is the natural log of the secant theta plus the tangent of theta plus a constant. This one simplified very nicely for us. So now to simplify back, we have the natural log of the secant. Secant is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent, x over 2, plus the tangent. Looking at our triangle, the tangent's the opposite over the hypotenuse. I'm sorry, the opposite over the adjacent. x squared minus 4 over 2 plus a constant. And now we have our antiderivative, or integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus 4. So all the trig substitution follows generally the same pattern. We need to identify which type we're talking about if we've got a difference of squares where the x comes first, 
we'll let x equal a sine a secant theta. If we have a sum of squares, we'll let x equal a tangent of theta. And if we have a difference of squares where the perfect square comes first, we'll let x equal a sine of theta. And then all the problems solve pretty much identical from there. So take a look at practicing some of these, and we will talk about these in class as we look at them a bit closer. Good luck.